This video is sponsored by FlexiSpot, but more on that later. If you follow the channel at all, you'll know I have a soft spot for all things retro. Over the past few years, I've painted their iconic second edition starter set, I've dabbled and experimented with the 1989 and 1994 paint sets, and I've even built a board of terrain using the 90s terrain book. For me, retro projects are my comfort zone, the thing that soothes my soul. Honestly, life has been a bit of a whirlwind lately, from welcoming my son into the world to navigating the challenges of running my own business and all the normal aspects of life that come along with it. I found my motivation has waned a little bit and that can be something that's quite difficult to overcome. So I thought in this video, we'll have a bit of a palette cleanser, go back to the safe space and do some more 90s painting. Now, I'm not claiming to be a world-class painter or anything close to it, but I love experimenting. And a while back, I painted modern miniatures in the classic 90s art style and absolutely loved the result. Many of you asked to see the reverse of that. Well, the wait is over, this is it. In this video, I'm going to take a classic 90s Space Marine and paint it using modern techniques. Things have changed so much over the last few years. Models have become better, sharper, more detailed, and the tools and equipment we use have improved as well. Now that's not to say older models are bad, they're just different. How do the older models look when we apply the skills we've learned and the experience we've gained? Let's find out. My name is Oliver and this is Broadsword Wargaming. So let's jump in starting with this little guy, a second edition Space Marine. That monopose stance and classic push-fit bolt gun, this sculpt is peak second edition Warhammer. There are countless ways to paint Space Marines, but for this project, I'm focusing on the techniques I enjoy the most. To begin, I applied a Xenophil Prime, white sprayed over a black base to create natural shadows and highlights on the model. For the color scheme, I'm loosely following Games Workshop's recommendations to keep things consistent with the previous video. I started with a thin, even coat of McCrag Blue, applying two layers to ensure a smooth base. Next, I used Calgar Blue for highlights, focusing on the higher areas to enhance contrast. These included the tops of the shoulder pads, the backpack and the back of the legs. Then to refine the shadows, I added some depth by airbrushing Duchy Violet into the darkest recesses, creating subtle interest and richness in the shading. After finishing the main colors, here's the result. Now, while I personally prefer brighter ultramarines, this strikes a nice balance between my taste and the traditional Games Workshop scheme. It's actually looking pretty good. Now, painting projects like these always give me a serious case of hobby neck. And if like me, your chair is wobbling, causing back pain or tipping when you lean back, it's probably time for an upgrade. Well, meet this video sponsor, FlexiSpot, and their chair, the C7 Max, designed to give you ultimate comfort and stability no matter how you sit. This chair isn't just another office seat. It's customizable to fit you. In office mode, lock the backrest for perfect posture support. Need to ease the tension? The adaptive lumbar support molds to your back with no need for extra cushions, while the adjustable headrest lets you find your ideal angle, whether you're working, gaming, or relaxing. Choose between a hypoallergenic foam cushion that distributes weight evenly, or a breathable mesh cushion to stay cool. The wider seat and forward tilt feature keep you comfy even on those long days. And unlike most chairs, the C7 Max includes a pull-out footrest and a four-level recline, with 3D adjustable armrests that move up, down, forward, back, and side to side, you'll find the perfect position every time. Why not give the C7 Max a try with FlexiSpot's 30-day risk-free trial and a 10-year warranty? And don't forget, use my code C730 for a $30 discount. Grab your C7 Max today and say goodbye to chair struggles. Next, I tackled the edge highlighting using Fenrisian Grey. Rather than painstakingly painting every edge, I used a sponge to save time and add a touch of natural looking battle damage. Weathering has become a staple in modern miniature painting, and it felt essential to include it to achieve the look I wanted for this video. One major difference you'll see between classic and modern schemes is the shoulder trim. In the older style, it was a bright yellow, not the gold we see today. Another change is the weapon casing, once red, is now black. After establishing those key details, I added the remaining base colors, dark brown for the leather parts, lead belcher for the metallics, and then tidied up any mistakes to keep everything clean and simple. With all of the base colors done, I applied a coat of gloss varnish in preparation for the next step, the fun stuff. First up, transfers. Our transfers are an excellent way to add character and detail, breaking up the flat panels while adding iconic symbols like the Ultramarine's big U and the Tactical Squad arrow. I know a lot of people struggle with transfers, so here's how I handle them. 
First, I'll cut out the specific design you need and soak it in water. While waiting, apply Microsol and Microset as directed on the bottles. These projects for me are game changers. They smooth the transfers onto the model, soften them and help them adhere perfectly, even on curved or uneven surfaces. Next, I moved on to oils. Oils and enamels have become increasingly popular in miniature painting, and I wanted to incorporate them here. The more I experiment with them, the more I think I like them. I don't claim to be a pro at these, but I'm certainly learning. The gloss varnish I applied earlier allows the oils to flow into the recesses easily and protects the underlying paint job from the thinners or spirits we're about to use. A few taps of oil into the recesses gives us a clean and precise pin wash, enhancing the depth and definition of the model. Unlike acrylics, any excess oil can be easily removed with a makeup sponge or Q-tip, making this process far more forgiving. Once the oils dried, I sealed everything with a satin varnish and got into the final stages of the paint job. I used Liberator Gold to brighten the gold sections, added a rich red to the eye lenses, and then applied grey highlights to the black areas. I honestly wasn't feeling particularly keen on this scheme earlier on, but now it's coming together, I'm really liking it. We just need to add the finishing touch, and for that I'm going to use Geek Gaming Scenic's Base Ready Desert Sand and Stone. I apply a dollop of fast dry basing glue, a kind of tacky PVA, and then literally throw basing material at it. This will let it stick in quite a natural way. Normally I dunk and shake, but it looks cooler on camera to do it that way. A couple of tufts to hide any gaps, cover up any mistakes, and we are done. This is the finished result of painting a 90s Space Marine using modern techniques. We've had airbrushing, oils, sponge stippling, and edge highlighting. What do you think to this? It came out so much better than I thought it would. I really genuinely didn't like it earlier on, but once the oils hit, it really helped separate the airbrush paint job and make the model just look so much better. Standing him next to his 90s counterpart, I now feel bad about my 90s paint job. But all of those models together in their collective era looked just as good as well. Placing this chap next to his Primaris friend, he doesn't look that bad. Honestly, on a modern gaming table, a squad of these painted in this style wouldn't stand out as badly as I thought it would. There is something about them. There's just a classic charm. And looking at these pictures, both had a very similar paint job. I think I genuinely prefer the second edition model. I don't know whether that's the rose tinted glasses, the nostalgia or the age hitting, but for me, it's just something a little different. I hope you enjoyed this video and could take something away from it because no matter how you're feeling, hobby for me and for you hopefully should be an escape from any of the troubles you have. So whatever you're doing, stay safe, take care, and I'll catch you in the next one. Now go and watch all of the rest of the nostalgia videos to make yourselves feel great.